Ya. <clears throat> so bad I was min shaitan uh, my name is as you all know my name is Shaib Abdullahi. I seek refuge with God against the accused devil. Woman ahsana kawlan min man da'a ila Allah wa amila salihan wa qala inna li min al-muslimin. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and act righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims. That is, submitters. Hazi sabili adu ila Allah ala basiratin ana wa mani tabani wa subaana Allahi wa ma'ana min al-mushirakin. This is my way I invite to God, that is Allah, by perception. Uh, basira, perception. Uh, I and whoever follows me, and glory be to Allah, for I am not among the idolaters, that is the mushriks. <coughs> Salim, young Kuri Kaji, young Kuri. Alhakum Rabbikum, Famansha, Falyu Min, Wamansha, Falyakfu. The truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Nobody is forced for anything. Uh, by the way, you can see the shirt I'm wearing. This design, beautiful design, was done by my brother Abdul Razak back in Ghana. Right, so I usually you see most of my videos. I usually wear this kind of designs because I, I this is my heritage. I fail to to represent my where I come from. So you see most of the times I do uh, my lectures, you see me wearing this kind of design design clothing. So he is the one who does it. So if anyone is interested in doing such designs, then you can contact me and I will link you up with him so that he can get the designs for you, inshallah. And it's affordable it's not expensive right of course the shirts the shirt quality itself is coming from europe i buy them from h and m before i send them to him in ghana and he does the design beautifully for you right it's because i had a lot of people asking me about this <clears throat> so i felt like this is the right time to tell people how and the possible means to get it yeah so uh, our topic today, usually, I place this under the let's discuss al-Islam, right? It means let's discuss Islam, al-Islam. <clears throat> the word al-Islam that I add is the like Arabic word. So let's discuss the submission when we translate it into English, right? Uh -huh. So by this, which means under let's discuss Islam, it's a series I've been doing uh, way back last year, uh, and then. I break in about two and a half months. I haven't been online to do my lectures. So this is the right time I decided on. This is the right time I have to do the lectures for people to benefit. Because a lot of people have been benefit, I, benefiting from it. And I get the feedback from it. Right? And uh, bear in mind, I don't take any payment from anybody for any program I do. I do it as feasibility for my jihad for God. That's all I do. Now, uh... Lately, I've come across uh, these issues of uh, the, the, the Hadithiyun. I would say Hadithiyun, that is the Hadith sects, people who belong to the sects like Sunni, Shia, whatever you have. Uh, they do their programs and then they say they are inviting Quranists. Uh, they, they, they tag people who follow Quran alone as Quranists and other, yes, uh, which is wrong, right? So I, I have decided to now give them the name Hadithiyun. Right, so if you have followed quite a number of my videos, this is the name I call anybody who follows hadith or who puts hadith above the Quran. This is what I do. Uh, so they are hadithiyun. Now, this hadithiyun, I came across a video, a link somebody sent to me, which is uh, it's called Hamza Hamza Dens. It's on YouTube. Ham, Hamza Den, right? It's Hamza, it's a, it's a like a, a Caucasian guy who actually converted to Islam. So he does this program and he says he's inviting the Quran Quranists, right? And first of all, there's nothing called Quranist in Islam, right? There's nothing like Quraniyun or Quranist in Islam. Don't let anybody tag you such a name. It's wrong, right? It's wrong. Now, what God asks us to do to become is Muslims, a submitter, to submit to God alone, just like he told Abraham in chapter 2, verse 131. When God tell, told him, Aslim, then he says, Aslam tu Rabbil Alameen, I submit to the Lord of the worlds. This is what makes you a Muslim. You submit to God alone, not Sahih Bukhari, not anybody else, to God. We don't even submit to anybody else in the religion except God, right? Allah, that is who we submit to, not, not anybody, right? Good. 
Now, so what makes what? How do we define a Muslim according to the Quran? Without, if we don't, if we define a Muslim without going to the Prophet or the Messenger to see the example God gave us in the Quran, then we are out of coverage. So we need to see how did God define the Prophet or the Messenger as a Muslim. When you go to chapter twenty-seven, verse ninety-one, uh, and read up to ninety-two, the Prophet himself he said, "Wa umirtu an akuna min al muslimin I have been commanded to be among the Muslims. Mind you, he never said, I have been commanded to be among Ali Sunnah. Because they are sectarians. They are mushriks. God, Muhammad alayhi salam, never, ever claimed to be Ali Sunnah or following Sunnah. Any, anywhere in the Quran, you can never hear it. Right? He says, Wa umirtu, I have been commanded, umirtu. An akuna in order to become or to be min al muslimi to be among the Muslims, submitters, not among Shia, not among Tariqa to Jijaniya, not among Jews, not among Christians, not among any other religion you have, but instead to be what? A Muslim. And what is a Muslim? You submit your will to God. That is it. This is what makes you a Muslim. Do you get the point? Now, so when he, when he, the Muhammad alayhi salam said, Wa umirtu an akuna min al muslimin, then verse 92, Wa an atlu wal Quran, Wa an atlu wal Quran, in order to recite the Quran. So now, to recite the Quran, because that is the message given to him to be given to mankind. So chapter 6, verse 19. He says, And that the Quran has been, this Quran has been inspired to me in order to warn you and whomever it may reach. Yeah, Salam, uh, uh, Abdul Salam. You see, so the Quran has been inspired to Muhammad in order to warn people, in order to recite to the people. In order to what? Remind the people. For Zakir bil Quran man yakhafu wa eid. Chapter 50 verse 45. Right? This is the assignment given to Muhammad as a Muslim. So before I started this lecture, you heard me saying, Woman ahsan al-kawlan min man da'a ila Allah wa amila salihan wa qala inna li min al-muslimin. Who is better than this person in speech? Can you be better in speech than such a person? Who submitted to God and is a Muslim and he invites to God. He's not inviting to himself or Sahih Bukhari or anything. He's inviting towards God. So God is asking a simple question. Woman ahsana kawlan mimman da'a ila Allahi wa amila salihan wa qala inna li min al-Muslimin. How can you be better than that, such a person? He didn't say wa qala inna li min al-Mushrikin or uh, Ali Sunnah or Tijaniya or Shia. I never claimed to be that. Never did I say I'm a Quraniyun. What is a religion is that? God gave you a religion called Quranists, Quraniyun. That's madness. Don't ever uh, ascertain or attest to what other enemies call you. Don't ever accept that. And remember, if they call you such names, you are also privileged to call them another name they might not want. So whenever somebody tags you as Qurani Yun, just tell, tag him as Hadisi Yun. And I tell you for a fact, it rages them. <laughs> it raises their rage. It angers them. It infuriates them. Yes. So when they do such to you, tell them the same. Call them Hadisi Yun if they call you Quranist. There's nothing like Quranist. It's a sect. So tag yourself away. You are only ask to be a Muslim. You can say, yes, I'm a Muslim who follows the Quran alone. There's no problem with that. But when you tag yourself with a name and say, I'm a Quranist, what, 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 what is that? <laughs> You're trying to imitate the Shias, the Sunnis, the Tijaniyas, the Ahmadiyas? Think wisely. Right? Good. So now the reason why I use Muhammad as an example is that chapter 33 verse 21 says, there has been a good pattern, a good example for you in the messenger of God. That is Muhammad as a messenger because he existed. 
he lived on this earth and died right so now his examples can be found in the Quran whatever he did as a messenger we can find it there yeah it's there for whoever tells you oh he's not there let, let him find me Shraib Abdullah let's sit down one on one on a dialogue and I proved to him what the messenger did in the Quran yes one of the examples is what umirtu an akuna min al muslimin chapter 27 verse 91 he said himself I've been commanded to be among the Muslims that is Muhammad speaking there yes so if he said this who are you to say something else to say you are a Shia or Sunni are you in your right senses or you are just arrogant now so since there is a good example in the messenger of God for me and you to follow, let's go and see which book was he, did he read to the people. Chapter 17, verse 45 to verse 46. Chapter 17, Surah to the Israel. Then we go to verse 45 to verse 46. Now see what he, the prophet, reads to the people. وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ هِجَابًا مَسْتُورًا وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْقَهُوهُ فِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقْرَأْ وَإِذَا ذَكَرْتَ رَبَّكَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَحْدَهُ وَلَوْ عَلَى أَدْبَارِهِمْ نُفُورًا What does the verse mean? And whenever you, Muhammad, alayhi salam, whenever you read the Quran, salam, ala jata al-Mamud, whenever you read the Quran, we place a concealed partition between you and those who do not believe in the hereafter. Now, somebody might be saying, oh, oh, no, then how can you say this is addressed to a Shia or Sunni because they believe in the hereafter? No, saying you believe is different from really having the conviction that you believe. There's a difference. Chapter 2, verse 8, he says, Chapter 2, verse 8 of the Quran. Among the people are those who say we believe in God in the last day, but God says they are not believers. To understand the criteria of a true believer, go and check chapter two, uh, chapter eight, verse two to verse four. Chapter two, uh, chapter eight, verse two to verse four. You see the criteria of a true believer. Yes. Now ask yourself: If somebody is a Shia or Sunni or Tariqa to Tijaniya or Ahmadiyya, do they fall in the criteria described in chapter eight, verse two to verse four? The answer is no. They don't fall in that criteria. Because according to them, if you don't believe in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, or other jambos, you are not a Muslim. <laughs> so that is their criteria. You see? Now let's go back to God. Chapter 17, verse 45 to verse 46. And whenever you, Muhammad, read the Quran, we place a concealed partition between you and those who do not believe in the hereafter. Verse 46. And we place coverings over their hearts, lest they comprehend it. What? The book, the Quran you are reading, who? Huh? Who? We place coverings huh? over their hearts lest they comprehend it. And in their ears we put what? Deafness. So this is why when somebody belongs to a sector, a Sunni, a Shia, when you read the Quran alone to him, it can never, he can never grasp it. It doesn't enter here. It's blocked. So why waste your time? Somebody will say, then Shrib, what are you doing? I'm here to lecture the intelligent ones. I'm not here for fools and dumb people. <laughs> no way. Yeah, salam, brother, name Sita. I'm not here to lecture somebody who is ignorant. No. Even in a classroom, when a teacher is teaching and there's a foolish student or ignorant, he doesn't pay attention to them. He pay attention to the intelligent ones. Yeah. So when I'm here to lecture people, somebody might think I'm just wasting my time trying to convince ignorant people. Are you kidding me? Me waste my time? After God tell, told me what I read Anil Jahili, He told me to turn away from the ignorant people. Then I should come and waste my time. In, in, no, I'm only here for people who wish to be Muslims and then are intelligent. That is all. That is all I come to do. So Quran chapter 17 verse 45 is telling you that Muhammad at his son alayhi salam was reading the Quran to the people. Yes. And then when God places the coverings over their hearts over those who do not believe in the hereafter, what happens? 
And when you mention or when you remember or when you mention your Lord in the Quran alone, fill Quran wahadahu. Look, there is no scholar on earth who can face me one on one and prove to me that Muhammad was given the Quran and Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim or Jami at Tirmidhi or Abu Dawood. Wallahi lazim. No scholar on this earth can even prove to me from the Quran that Muhammad salam, was given the Quran and Sunnah to follow. Where? Which verse? <laughs> Where? Unless you misinterpret the voice of God, you mistranslate the words of God, then you can put your own concussion there. Wallahi lazim. Hey, are you one love? Long time, bro. You get the point. This is what all the scholars do out there. They mistranslate the verses of God. Verses of God. They what? Misquote the verses of God. If God says, Atiwullaha wa atiwu Rasul. Listen carefully. The word Rasul, it means messenger. But you pay attention to the scholars when they are talking. When they say, Atiwullaha wa atiwu Rasul, they will say, Obey God and obey the prophet. Are you nuts? Did God say, Atiwullaha wa atiwu Nabi? He will say, oh, come on, but they are the same thing. Are you, are you okay? Are you okay? When you went to school, you don't know the difference between A and B? Where, where did God ever, ever tell you, Atiul Laha wa Atiul Nabi? Are you, are you in your right senses? Who is teaching you guys? No wonder I don't get you face to face. Wallahi lazim. That day you will study by force. Why will God say, Atiwu Allah wa Atiwu Rasul? And you tell me, oh, he's, he's the prophet. So God doesn't know how to say prophet. He doesn't know how, how to say Atiwu Allah wa Atiwu Nabi. <laughs> so now you are correcting God. That Rasul means Nabi. Ha! Hey, are you not the same people in your hadith saying that Rasul and the uh, uh, Nabi, their duty is different? Really? Salam, Sister Banisha, uh, sorry. Ah, you the sectarians, is that how you have been taught? So when God says, Atiwu Allah wa Atiwu Rasul, to make it worse, then they will say, Allah, Atiwu Allah means obey the Quran, Atiwu Rasul means obey the Hadith. Subhanallah. Why can't I get you one on one? I will make you sweat. Nahara said Allah. <laughs> chapter 17 verse 46 and when you mention your lord in the quran alone when you use the quran alone to mention allah they turn away on their backs in aversion they hate it they don't like it because you are not using quran and sahih bukhari you are not using quran and sahih muslim you are not using Quran and Jami at Tirmidhi. So they hate it. Do you see the point? Now, if I ask yourself a question, at the time of Prophet Muhammad, was there Sahih Bukhari? Was there Sahih Muslim? If the answer is no, what book was he using to call the people? So he told you by himself. We don't need to go and ask anybody. He told you, chapter 6, verse 19. Well, and that the Quran has been inspired to me in order to warn you by it and whomever it may reach. He didn't say any other jambos your scholars are talking about. Salam, Do you see? Salam, Madini Diaries. Yeah. Now, you make your scholars remember. Chapter 33 verse 70 says, Ya you wa lazina amanu itaku la wa kulu kawlan sadida. Ya you wa lazina amanu itaku la wa kulu kawlan sadida. Now this word kawlan sadida means use the correct speech. So God is telling me and you as a believer, Ya you wa lazina amanu itaku la. Oh you who believe, huh? oh you who have believed, or oh you who believe. Reference God, that is, be pious to God, have the fear of God in you. Then he says, Wakulu kaulan sadida. Wakulu kaulan sadida. It means the correct speech. 
the correct statement, the correct word. Don't go, if God says black, don't go and say blue. Are you in your right senses? When you went for academics, if your teacher is teaching you and you say A, do you say B? What is wrong with the human being? So why will God say, Atiwu Allaha wa Atiwu Rasul? Wa ma ala Rasuli illa balagu mabin. Ask yourself, which balag was given to him? Was it Sahih Bukhari? Was it Sahih Muslim? Was it Jami at Thirmidhi? Was it Abu Dawood? What is wrong with you? So we've seen clearly what makes the Prophet a Muslim. He said it in chapter 27 verse 91, Wa umirtu an He has been commanded to be among the Muslims. He wasn't commanded to be among Shia or Sunnah or Tariqa to Tijaniya or Ahmadiyya or Salafiyya or Sufiyya <laughs> or Judaism or Christianity or Buddhism. Uh, Buddhism, no. Wa umiltu an akuna min al muslimi Wa an atulu wal Quran. And to recite the Quran. So if I am following this honorable man's footstep, what am I supposed to do? I have to also become a Muslim and then recite the Quran and read the Quran. That is it. No Sahih Bukhari there. Do you see? Good. So refute anybody who call you Quran Yun or Quranist. Don't accept it, but don't fight him. Just replicate and also call him Hadithiyun. I bet you they hate it more than you. You can bet. Yes, when they call you Quraniyun, call them Hadithiyun. Wallahi lazim. And you see if they will keep continue calling you that name. Yes, because when you call somebody Hadithiyun, it's the lowest form of degrading. Hadith you means they are following Sahih Bukhari, a man made book. It's better to call you Quran you than to call you Hadith you. <laughs> Do you see the point? Good, let's go on. So, like I said in chapter 41, verse 33, it says, And who is better in speech? How can you be better than me if you claim you are Ali Sunnah? You are Shia, you are Tariqa to Tijani. How can you be better than me in speech? If we face one on one, can you dialogue with me? Put off the challenge, let's face up. Put off the challenge. Let's face one on one and see the difference. You are better than me in speech. Submitted to God, a Muslim. And you claim you are a Shia, Sunni, Ali Sunna Tariqa. You, you think I'm bragging? Put off the challenge. Let's face it off. And let's see who is better in speech, who has clear conscience, and who is using reasoning and logic. Let's see. The book, Sahih Bukhari, they wrote for you, that you are telling us the prophet say you can drink a camel's urine. That the prophet is telling you, to like, like you can sleep with your wife even if she is uh, having her menses. The, the book that is telling you to kill people when they commit uh, uh, zina. Really? Sahih Bukhari. Allah, don't make the mistake and step on my pedal. I will crush your faith. Wallahi lazim. Wallahi lazim. I've been throwing this threat for so long. You don't make that mistake and step on my pedal. Let it be in Finland, let it be in America, let it be in Ghana, let it be the whole world. Wallahi lazim. None of your scholars who belong to a sector will face me one on one. Let them throw up the challenge. The best they can do is to type and insult me. Simple. I can take that. I've been taking insult for years. Does it change me? I'm looking more handsome than that. If when they insult me, it makes me better as a person. Now, so chapter 27, verse 81. I see clearly what the verses of God are, who, which group the verses of God are meant for. Now, we can see in chapter 27, verse 91, the prophet said, an al So he has been commanded to be among the Muslims. Now, even regardless of me being a Muslim, and I'm calling to God, Does that mean I can convince everybody? No. 
Let's check. Chapter 27 verse 81. Wa ma anta bihadil umyi anda dalatihim in tusmi'u illa man yu'minu bi ayatina fahum muslimun. What does the verse mean? And you, the one who claim you are a Muslim, you cannot guide the blind from their error. You can't. You, the one who claim you are a Muslim, you can't guide the blind from their error. Only those who believe in our verses, who believe in the verses of the God, which is what? The Quran. They will hear. They will listen to me right now, Shaib Abdullah, when I'm talking. Only those who, who believe in the verses of Allah, they will listen to me. Somebody who doesn't believe in the verses of God, why will he waste his time with me? Do you, do you get my point? If somebody has is a believer of Sahih Bukhari, do you think he wastes his time listening to me, the Quran alone follower? Not possible. Do you see the point? Good. So God says, and you, at that time he was talking to Muhammad alayhi salam. You cannot guide the blind from their error. The word there is wama anta. The anta, the word anta is a second person pronoun, it's a singular form. Wama anta bihadil umhi andalalatihi. Intus mi u illa man yu minu bi ayatina. Fahum muslimun. So whoever decides to become a Muslim or to be a Muslim, he will now listen to the verses of God. So don't be surprised when God says, "Faiza zakarta Rabba kafel Quran wahdahu wallahu ala adbarihim nufura." That means those people who don't believe in the Quran alone as the form of guidance, who don't lead us, they will now what turn away because they hate it. They will say, "Who is this guy? We have been hearing to say Bukhari before he came. How can he tell us say Bukhari is wrong?" Okay, if you don't say, say, follow say Bukhari, how do you pray? Are you nuts? Like I said, and you cannot guide. Uh, the blind from their error. Huh? Only those who believe in our verses will hear, and they are uh, the Muslims submitted. So, somebody who is a Muslim will listen to the verses of God. That is a believer in the verses of God. We will listen what God has to say. But somebody who is a Sunni, Shia, Tijaniya, Ahmadiyya, they are not interested. Because they are already part of the sect and they've been programmed to believe in what their scholars tell them, not what God says. Yeah. So let's move on. So that aside, that is concerning when somebody call you Qurani Yun or Quranists, give him that reply. Tell him, are you also Hadith Yun? They hate it. They will never speak to you. <laughs> yeah. So I give you this assignment. Please start calling them Hadith Yun or the Hadithists. When they call you Quran, you and Quranist, just tell them you are a Muslim. There's nothing called Quran Yun in the Quran. There's nothing called Quranist in the Quran. It doesn't exist. Yeah. So apart from that, the next question, time is for the Salat. Some people are having misconceptions concerning the timings of Salat, right? I've done lectures over and over, but it seems uh, people still have time to catch up. And remind mind you, don't rush into understanding the verses of God. Take your time. Take it slow by slow, step by step. You get to understand, grasp the understanding thereof, right? It is, uh, it, it, it is, it is not. Uh, 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 thank you very much, Muktabu <clears throat> Uh It is not about just taking verses always to join them. Then you get salat. It doesn't work that way. So, what what is the notion behind this part? Timings for the salat. I've already done lectures on it, but let's go again. The timings for the Salat here, right? Some people will quote chapter 30, verse 17 to 18. What is wrong with that verse? Let's go and see. Chapter 30, verse 17 to verse 18. So let's clear the misconception concerning people who think this is talking about Salat, right? Now, before I read the verses, chapter 30, verse 17 to verse 18 has nothing to do with the Salat. Nothing. Whatsoever. Nothing. No Salat is mentioned there. Yes. So let's let's break it down. So God says, For subhanallah hina tumsuna wa hina tusbihun. So glory be to God when it is nightfall. That is Masa'a. Masa'a. 
that is night night four right night four not night actually but night four right and then wahina tusbihun when it is morning tusbihun means sabaha that is morning sabaha sabah al khair good morning so so when it's morning ah uh, to him belong the the glory right then verse 18 walaw al hamdu fi samawati wal ard and then he says what wa ashiyan wahina tuzhirun and for him is all praise that is the praise hamdu the praise in the heavens you the human being we don't live in the heavens and the earth you live on earth but is it only you no is it a command no then he says while it is evening that is ashiyan that is isha and when it is noon you reach noon right now what some people refuse to understand is look the quran studying the quran is just like taking up your academics it goes by grade by grade grade one grade two grade three and it goes to the highest level don't rush into putting up meanings in the quran let the quran does do its own clarification because that is what the prophet was told remember chapter 75 verse 16 to 19 Inna alayna jama'ahu wa qur'anahu fa iza qara'nahu fa tabi'u qur'ana thumma inna alayna bayanahu so upon god is the clarification of the qur'an not upon you don't try to clarify things using your opinion when you analyze chapter 30 verse 17 to 80 it doesn't mention the word salat there it doesn't even have the notion of command amr feel amr to to command it's not a command if God says, Fasabbihu, Hina, Tumsuna, if you say Fasabbihu, it becomes a command, then glorify is a command. But here he's just saying, so glory be to God, or glory is to God when it is nightfall. Is, are you the only creature on earth who is glorifying God? No. You are not the only creature who is glorifying God. And every creature has his own time of glorifying God. Do you get the point? So here God is talking about glory be to God when it is nightfall and when it is morning. Then it goes, verse 18. And for him or to him is all praise. The praise is to him. Are you the only creature of God who praises God? No, it is not a command. God is explaining what has been happening. Right? Praise in the heavens. And the earth. So which means the praise is not you, only the human being who sent praise to God. Right? So God is just re reinstating by telling you that to him belongs all the praise in the heavens and the earth while it is evening and when it's noon. So during noon time, even some creatures still praise God. It is not talking about salat. It doesn't mention any salat there unless you put your own meaning there, which is deviance. Let the Quran explain itself. Do you see how it works? So chapter 30 verse 17 to verse 18 has nothing to do with Salat. There is nothing like Salat there. Do you see how it goes? There is nothing like Salat there. Uh, Salam, uh, Kamal Anwar. Uh, Abdul Salam, I didn't get your point. He says maybe an example from the Quran will make them understand. I don't get uh, what example you mean. Right? So now, uh, yeah, for instance, yeah, he said for some example. Yes, let me give that example. For instance, this glory, glory, uh, glory like when you go to chapter, uh, let's say, Surah Al-Araf, right? Uh, you go to the last verse. This is what he says. Inna lazina in the rabbika. Huh? He's telling the prophet. Inna lazina in the rabbika. La yastakbiruna an ibadatihi. Then he says what? Wa yusabbihunahu lahu yasjudun. Now, those at your law, that is the angels there, they glorify God as well. So it's not you, only the human being who is sending glory to God. Right? But we don't claim that this is the salat they are doing. It is talking about glorification. Apart from that, when you go to chapter 24, verse 41, the birds and the heavens and the earth, they all send glory to God. So let's see. Chapter 24, Verse 41. 
Let's see what God says concerning glorification, right? Verse 41, he says, Alam tara anna allaha, huh? yusabbihu lahu man fi samawati wal ard, wa tayru safad. Kullun kad alima salatahu wa tazbihahu. Then he says, Wallahu alimun bima yaf'alun. Do you not see that God is the one to whom those in the heavens and the earth glorify? So it's not only you, the human being, who glorify God. So the glorification God was talking about in chapter 30, verse 17, that glory be to God when it is this and when it is that. It's not a command, actually giving you a command that, hey, you have to do this. That is different. Right? So God says, as well as the beds in rows, the beds you see in rows, they all glorify God. But according to chapter 17, verse 44 of the Quran, you do not comprehend how they glorify God. You don't know what they say. You don't know how they do it. You don't know. You only see from what God said, but you don't understand what they are doing. Right? Each already knows its salat. And it's what? Glorification. So you can see the glorification has been taking size different from salat. Glorification can be done differently from the what? Salat. Alright? Tasbih can be done separately from the what? Salat. Do you, do you see the point? Good. Now, then he says, and God is aware of what they do. So now we here we can get the word salat and we can get the word tasbih. That is glorification. Two separate things. Right? So I'm going to break it down. Then we understand how it can be inter interchangeable. <clears throat> so chapter 30 verse 17 to verse 18 is not a command. It is not a command that God is as commanding us to, to do that. And even if you command us in that verse, it is not a salat. It's not talking about salat there. Right? There's a difference between established salat and then you are asked to glorify. There's a difference. It's not the same thing. Now, yeah, so we can see chapter 30, verse 17 to 18 is not a command from God asking us to do something. It's already it's telling us what has been happening, not commanding us to do something there. And we have shown you the example from chapter 24, verse 41, that whatever is in the heavens and the earth, they give glory to God. They glorify God. In their own way. And even the birds, they have their way of glorification and their salat. That is the birds. You, the human being, don't compare yourself with the bird. How do you do their salat? It's not the same. <laughs> For you, you will see how God asks you. It's in the Quran. Right. Now, apart from that, whenever God is giving a command to us, He starts with the messenger, the Prophet, alayhi salam. He starts with him from the Quran. He doesn't start with you people direct. He starts with the prophet and the messenger first. Right? So now let's go and see if God wants him to do glorification, how does he command him? So I take you to chapter 20, verse 130. Let's see what it says there. Chapter 20, verse 130. That is Surah Tuta. It says, Fazbiru ala ma yakuluna wa sabbihi bihamdi rabbika kabla tuluwi shams wa kabla guru biha. Then he says, Wa min ana illayli fa sabbi wa atrafa nahar la allaka torda. So be patient over what they say and glorify with praise of your Lord. He's talking to who in this verse? Muhammad alayhi salam. He is the first, uh, second person pronoun being addressed in this verse. So God wasn't talking to anybody else but him at that time. And this is not about Salat. God never mentioned anything about Salat in this verse. But what I've noticed is I've seen some followers of the Quran trying to twist meanings into this verse and then say it is about Salat. No. There's a difference between glorification, tasbih, and there's a difference between Salat. They are not the same thing. However, Salat can include remembrance, glorification, and so recitation, prostration, and so on and so forth. Salat. Because that you need to establish it. But when we say glorification, I can glorify God without performing ablution. I can do tasbih without going to wash myself. I can just be sitting down and glorify God. 
do you see the point of glorification now the verse when you check the verse by context in the verse it mentioned the word women are not a lay are not a lay then he says fasabi wa aturafa this aturafa it is in plural form in plural form aturafa which is it's more than one it's more than two it's more than three and it can go three or four but it's more than two right now when you take the word fasabi wa aturafa nahar this atrafa, they are the terminals of the day. They are the sites of the day. Now, when you take a day, a full day, the sites of the day can be in plural form because the sites of the day is when the sun is setting. That's the twilight part of the day. So we have nautical twilight. We have civil twilight. We have astronomical twilight before night time comes. So when God says atrafa, fasabihi, it is not talking about salat there. It is just about glorification. I can be glorifying God without establishing salat at those times. Do you see the point? So apart from the three times God has given for glorification, I can do it at the extreme parts of the day. That is when this day is about to end. We have civil twilight, nautical twilight, astronomical twilight. These are all parts of the sites of the day. So I can do the glorifications at that time. It is not talking about establishing salat. It's the two different things together. Chapter 24 verse 41 tells you that even the birds, they know their salat and their glorification. That's B. It's two different things, not the same thing. Now, a lot of some Quran alone followers will take this verse and then misinterpret it and say oh chapter 20 hold on ladies and gentlemen sorry i need to take this call yeah oof hello yeah my busy kakra Yeah, sorry, I just had a call from, uh, got an interruption. Uh -huh. So, some people will take chapter 20, verse 130, and then try to fix it with Salat and say, oh, he's talking, no, 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 don't do that. Please, stop that. Stop that at all. Don't mix words of God anyhow. Please. It has nothing to do with Salat. The command there, the feel amr that he has been commanded to act upon, fasabi bihamdi rabbika, is about glorification. Just glorify God. It's just like when I wake up in the morning, I say subhanallah, alhamdulillah. I do that. That is glory be to God and then praise be to God. I say that when I get up in the morning. It's like you are showing praises to God. That is normal. You don't need to go and wash ablution to do that particular one. So glorification is a simple thing. Put it aside. Don't join it uh, to the number of salats God has given you. Established salat is different from do uh, tasbih. Tasbih doesn't say established tasbih. <laughs> it is about saying it, glorifying God. Yai, Uche. Ragas, I want him to go. That's why I gave him the phone. Why did you bring him back? Yeah. Do you see? So the chapter 20, verse 130 is not talking about establishing salat, it's about glorification. So when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Or if you say subhanallah, it's even enough. That is glorification. Yes. Now. So I've explained where he says aturaf, wa aturaf al nahar. That is the, the, the sites of the day where we have the civil twilight, nautical twilight, 
astronomical twilight, which means at that time you can still glorify God. There is nothing wrong. It's not talking about go and wash ablution, establish salat, and then do no. No. Listen carefully. No. Good. I will show you the difference. Apart from that, <clears throat> some people will also quote chapter 50, verse 39 to verse 40. Let's see what it says. Chapter 50, Surah Al-Kaf, verse 39 to verse 40. I'm showing you the difference between the Salat and the Tasbih. They are not the same thing. There is a difference. Salam, uh, Brother Daoud. Uh, yeah, Imran Farouk, that is correct. You can still use his name also to glorify him because he says, Fasabi bihamdi rabbika. Right? So you can use, since he is your Lord, you're glorifying him. That is still glorification. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So chapter 50, verse 39 to verse 40, he says, Fasbiru ala ma yakulun. Wasabi bihamdi rabbika. Kabla tulu is shams, wa kabla gurub. Then verse 40, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّهُ وَأَذُرْبَارَ السُّجُودِ So be patient over what they say and glorify with praise of your Lord, you Muhammad alayhi salam, he's talking to Muhammad, and praise your Lord before the rising of the sun, it is not talking about salat, listen carefully, and before the setting, it's not talking about salat, listen carefully. Then verse 40, and of the night, thus glorify him, still about tasbih. Tasbih is different from salat. Listen carefully. Tasbih is different from salat. Even the birds, chapter 24, verse 41, they know the difference between their salat and their tasbih. So you, the human being, should know likewise the difference. Then it says, and after the prostration. Now this is where you should reflect very well. After the prostration, which prostration? Because during those times, you have also your salat separately that you are going to do. So after your salat, that is after the prostration, because there is a the prostration in the salat. The sujood is in the salat you are going to do. So after the salat, your prostration which is found in chapter 4, verse 102, when Muhammad alayhi salam led the salat for the believers, you can see they prostrated. They did their sujood. So after their sujood, you can glorify God. That is the command here in chapter 40, 50, verse 40. Thus glorify him, God, after, after, and after the prostration of your salat. They come around the same time, but it doesn't mean they are the same thing together. No. Okay. So we are in chapter 11, verse 114. So he says, I came in Salat, a Torah, Fayyid Nahar, Wazula for Minan Light. Now let's understand this verse. There are three Salats mentioned in this verse. Three Salats mentioned in this verse. I'm breaking it down for you. I came in Salata. Torah Fahi, this Torah Fahi is double instance. That is a conjunction of two things. Right? Torah Fahi Nahar, the day has two sides, which is what? Morning and evening. That is dawn and evening. Huh? Bukuratan wa Asila. Or we say what? Uh, uh, Fajr and what? Isha. Right? It's like telling the Prophet. Right? Then it says, Wa Zulafa. It didn't say Ila. He didn't use the preposition ila. He says mina is different. Wazulafa. He didn't say ila layl. If he says ila layl, he's still talking about the two salats. But the word wazulafa, he brought mina. That mina here tells you the wa God put there is a preposition. It is not a conjunction. What is a preposition? Preposition is a function word that combines with a noun or pronoun or noun phrase to form a prepositional phrase that can have an adverbial or adjectival relation to some other word. I know my grammar is going <laughs> so pardon me. Now, when we say end, 
as a preposition is used with what the addition of or increase by so it is used to add something to increase something as a preposition but when it is used as a conjunction it's used to connect words clauses or sentences used to indicate that the following thing is also included or add at add an additional point so when this word wa is used as a conjunction that thing that two things mentioned is the same thing together but when it is this word end is used as a preposition it is showing you that something is added on its own listen carefully if i'm talking about a group of people including boys uh, four boys and one girl as a group i can tell you that go to this group and talk to the girl go to this group that group and and use the word and talk to that girl it becomes an addition of what i want to tell you but i'm talking about a group in general in the first place which is in, the girl is included but when i use the word and talk to the girl now i'm going to the group but it doesn't mean i'm going to talk to the group i'm going to talk to the girl in the group so when god says akimi salata tarafahin nahar tell you the day has two sides fajr and isha it is not part of the night isha is not night prayer fajr is not night prayer they are all part of the day then he says wazulafa min al-layl it didn't say ila it didn't say ila al-layl if he say ila then that means that is still part of the day now he's talking about the night so out of the night when we say mina is is from the night there is another salat there in the night from the night that is why chapter 50 verse 39 to 40 where he says wa min al-layl fa sabbihu wa adbara sujud for the glorification he told you that after the prostration there's glorification there so there's a night salat there that you do salat in the night so after the night salat you can do your glorification do you see it so chapter 11 verse 114 is not two salat is three salat mentioned in that verse for the prophet So somebody will say oh only this verse you are going to base on it so let's go to the next verse to explain that verse we go to chapter 17 verse 78 to 79 to explain chapter 11 now we are going to 78 to 79 in order to explain the previous verses right so now we are using the messenger as an example laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatu asanat right so now this is what god says akimi you see the word He didn't say akimu. If he say akimu, he's talking to us all, the believers, everybody. Now he's still talking to the messenger. Because we are using him as an example to follow. So whenever there is a command to do something, God must use him first. Because he is the example I am following. If God hasn't commanded him to do, I don't need to do it. No. because he is the role model we are following laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatu asanat you see the point so now chapter 17 verse 70 says akimi salata god is telling him to establish the salat then he says liduluki this word duluki comes from the word dalaka dalaka right liduluki shams still talking about the daytime now when we say duluki shams that is when the sun is declining is declining it started by li li it can be at huh? at or by so the word is at the declining of the sun then you can see the preposition ila is going it is going ila gasaki layl it is still going it hasn't ended so when god says li duluki shams ila gasaki layl that salat you are establishing at the declining of the sun hasn't ended it is still going ila gasakil lay 
until the twilight of the night, there is a salat there. You see, one, not two, not three, not five, not ten. For people who are telling you there is Zur and Asar, that's a lie. God is explaining something there. He hasn't finished. So at the declining of the sun, until the twilight of the night, or to the twilight of the night, here, there is Isha prayer. That is Isha salat there. That is late afternoon, evening. And when we say Isha, evening, what does evening mean? In Arabic, you can say Asila or you can say Ashi. That is Isha, according to the Quran. Right? It is the latter part of the day. What part is that? The period of decreasing light from late afternoon until what? Twilight, nightfall. That is what we call Ashi or Isha. That is the nightfall area. That is evening. That is the definition there. So when the sun start declining, we call it what? Maghrib. It's going. It's going to set. It's going to that side. But God is using the sun because sun is part of the day time. So remember chapter 11 verse 114. Akim in Salata Torah Fahin Nahar. He mentioned Nahar. Nahar has to do with the what? Shams. The sun. They go hand to hand together. Do you see? So now, here, chapter 17, verse 78, Akim is salata, liduluki shams ila gasakillai. It's not talking about two salats there. One thing going on there. Then now he brings the preposition by saying, wa. And what does he say? He says, wa Quran al fajr. And the reading of the word, dawn. You can see the dawn time has been mentioned now. Liduluki shams ila gasaki lel is talking about the evening. Isha, ashi, asila. Then it goes, preposition, wa, Quran al fajr, and the reading of the what? The dawn. Fajr is dawn time. So that is another salat. At the dawn time. Do you see? In the previous verse, chapter 11, salam, John Gosh. In the previous verse, chapter 11, verse 114, God used both as conjunction. Akim is salat, tarafai nahar. He said, tarafai nahar. Both instance, as a conjunction, two things, the same time. Then here, he used, after defining the evening time, he went ahead to define the fajr time for you. Wa Quran al-fajr. Then he says, in the Quran al-fajr, kana mashhuda. Indeed, the reading of the dawn can be what? Observed, can be witnessed. Or should be, or shall be, or will be observed. The reading of the dawn can be observed. Now, uh, in my previous lecture, I've told about this word reading. For instance, in the Quran, a lot of words have multiple meanings. One word can have multiple meanings, but based on context, then you choose which doesn't have a contradiction to set set in now when you use the reading it can be reading of the dawn based on the quran or it can be reading of the dawn based on what the fajr weather now when you go in that seven chapter 17 verse 78 it mentioned two salats there salat al-fajr and salat al-isha both, both both of them are based on the weather at daytime because fajr is not considered at night Fajr is not night. Take your dictionary and check the meaning of dawn. It is not night. That is the first light of the day. That is dawn. Good. Then verse 79. This is where it shows the third salat. Right? Remember, this is another preposition. It's a continuation of what the, the command God is giving the prophet in chapter 17 verse 78. So the command continues. Wamin al do you see here? After telling him about the Isha and the Fajr, now he goes, Wamin al That is the reading of the dawn. Huh? You get up and then do the reading, right? Then he says what? Nafilatan Laka is talking to the Muhammad alayhi salam because he is the example we are following. And of the night, thus stay awake for it. 
that is for the reading, right? As superfluous, that is extra, bonus for you. Perhaps your Lord will raise you to a commendable position. Now, if I'm following this honorable man as an example, as a messenger, and as an example for me to follow, chapter 33, verse 21, and I can see God giving him instruction of three salats in the Quran, Fajr, Isha, and Layl, the night salat. Why would I do something else? Do you see the point? Salim, kule kufanda. Do you see the point? So chapter 17, verse 78 to 79 is a replication of chapter 11, verse 114. There is no salat given to Muhammad salam, in the middle of the day. No salat. There is no salat al zuhur. There is no salat al asr. Unless you interpolate or concord a new meaning into the words of God. Do you see the point? So the word dalak or duluk, it is what? Something which is going down. Is going down or is setting. Yes. Salam. Uh, when the sun is going down, that is dalaka uh, as a verb. So duluk is shams, going down. Now, when something is going down, we don't say it's standing straight anymore. When something is going down, we don't say it's standing straight. When the sun is in the middle of the day, we don't say it's going down. It's a wrong grammar. You don't say it is setting from that position. We don't say sun is setting. At Zuhu, noon time. If you say sun is setting at that time, it means you have a lot to learn. So at the daytime, in the middle of the day, we don't say sun is setting. I give an example. Hey, Ajimola, if I have one million in my pocket, right, that one million, at that time, if I take one euro uh, from my one million, uh, if I say I take one million, uh, one euro from my uh, distance, that is when I can start seeing my money is what? Decreasing, it's going down because I've taken something out. But not when I have my one million intact. You don't say, Duluki is going down. <laughs> you understand? So what are the scholars telling the people? They say the Zuru player, you can get it in chapter 17, verse 78. How do you get it? They say the Duluki shams. Are you, are you in your right senses? If something Duluki shams, how do you get Zuhur? Because Zuhur, according to you, is in the middle of the day. So if you say something is certain, does it start setting in the middle of the day? Seriously? Then how come we are calling Maghrib sunset? That is setting. That is when the sun is going down. Totally. So the word dalak, uh, it is the form used in the Quran chapter 17 verse 78. Duluk has to mean something is setting, something is going down, something is fading away. That is the meaning of the word dalaka. Hmm? As a word form. Dalaka. Bilarakat. So liduluk is shams ila gasakil lain. One salat there. Then he says, Wa Quran al Fajr. The wa there is a conjugation. That is wa. It, sorry, it's, it's a conjunction. Wa and Wa Quran al Fajr. Do you see the point? <clears throat> Haj Mullah is saying, How did the Prophet pray? I did the lectures on that. Today I'm just giving the timings for the salat. The timings God gave to him to do the salat. That is the timings I gave. I guess you came late, so you didn't see the time. God gave him only three salats in the Quran. Three, Ajmola, three, three. And the prophet prayed according to the Quran. Simple. So we have seen chapter 11, verse 114, chapter 17, verse 78 to 79. Combined, there's three salats given to Muhammad. Three. Now, to further explain these three salats, chapter 76, verse 25 to 26. Let's see what God says. Surah Tul Insan, chapter 76. Verse 25 to 26. Let's see what it says. Jika na chi jika sharwa. Sharwa kaji. Now, the verse says, Waskur isma rabbika, rabbika, 
Bukuratan wa asila. You can see now God is further elaborating to Muhammad alayhi salam. He is the messenger we are following his footsteps. Lakad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatu asalat. So this messenger God gave him a command, feel amr, it's a command, right? So God tell him, waskur, waskuri isma rabbika bukratan wa asila. And commemorate the name of your Lord early in the morning, that is Fajr. When we say Bukratan, that is early in the morning, that is Fajr time. And Wa'asila is before sunset, that is Isha'i. According to the Quran, Ashiyi is before sunset, that is the evening time, when the sun is going down. Right? Then, verse, 70, uh, verse 26, this is interesting. He says, Wamina Lay, listen carefully. Wamina Lay. We all know the sujood, I do it in my salat. The sujood, I do it in my salat. So, lahu. Then he says, Wasabihu laylan tawila. And of the night, thus prostrate to God, before God, and glorify him a long night. I can still do glorification in my salat. That is a different thing. The, the tasbih, I can do be in my salat because you are just singing praises of God. You can say subhanallah, walhamdulillah, tabarakallah. You understand? All these are what? Glorifications. Now the interesting thing I want you to understand based on this chapter 76 verse 25 to verse 26 is the word zikra, zikr can be found in the word salat. Whenever the word salat is mentioned, it, it goes with what? Zikr. For instance, chapter 20, verse 14. God says, Inna ni ala Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budu ni wa akimi salat li zikri. He told Musa alayhi salam. He says, indeed, I am the God. There is no God but me. So what? Serve me, that is, worship me and establish the salat for my what? Zikr, for my remembrance. So when he established salat, it's for what? Zikr of God. So that is why he says in chapter 87 verse 15, Fazakara asmu rabbi fasallah. Huh? Fazakara asmu rabbi fasallah. Now, because in your salat, you are going to do the zikr of God at the same time with this. J, 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 J. That's why in chapter 62 verse 9, he says, Yeah. Ya you are lazina amanu. Is a new deal is salat min yawmil jumaat. He told you min yawmil jumaat. Then he tell you what? Fas aw ila zikir lai wazarul bay. Because the salat is based on the zikr of God. That's why you establish salat. So here to simplify the issue, God was telling Muhammad alayhi salam that waskur isma rabbika bukratan wa asila. Wamina Lail Fajjudu Lahu because this zikr you are going to do to God, it consists about the zikr. And you do sujud at the same time. So you recite the verses of God, you do praising, you praise God, you glorify God, then you do the prostration. And still you can glorify God whilst in prostration. Do you see how it goes? So now the timings for the salat is what God replicated in chapter 76, verse 25 to 26. And commemorate the name of your Lord early in the morning and before sunset and of the night. Three. So that is why I gave you chapter 11 verse 114 and chapter 17 verse 78 to 79. Because your salat consists of reciting or reading the Quran. Your salat that you are going to establish, it consists of reading the verses of God. As well right aha uh -huh. but it is only the glorification the zikr you are going to do to God directly but the recitation of the verses it is for you as a believer to establish the salat in order to re go through the verses of God for your own benefit it doesn't mean I'm going to God to take for instance uh, 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 to go in front of God and say oh but yada abila bi watabba ma agna anu no 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 that's not the point do you get the point? Aha. Uh -huh. The recitation of the verses is for your own good. 
That's why he says, uh, uh, chapter 73, if I remember very well, he says, وَرَتِلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلَ إِنَّ سَلُولُكِ عَلَيْكَ كَوْلًا ثَكِيلًا When you read the Quran, the message of the Quran, it doesn't go back to God. It's going to you. So God told you, إِنَّ سَلُولُكِ عَلَيْكَ كَوْلًا ثَكِيلًا Do you see? So when you read the Quran, after that, that is when you are going to communicate with God. So you prostrate and glorify your God. So chapter 76 verse 26 is telling you here, Ah, wa min al-layl fajjud lahu wa sabbihu laylan tawila. So now you glorify God directly. You talk to God directly. You tell him what you want. You want to praise him, you want to ask something because you say is insta'inu bi sabr wa salat. Ah, so you seek help from God even in your salat. We saw Zakaria alayhi salam chapter 3 verse 38 to 39. He sought help from his salat from God. It's normal. Do you see the point? Aha. Uh -huh. So breaking down all the verses for you, somebody might say, okay, in the night time, what is the right time I can do the night salat? Chapter 73 verse 20. God says, This ma'aka is talking to Muhammad alayhi salam. He is the messenger. So ma'aka with you. You understand? So God is the one who is aware. He is aware of what the believers do at night. But the believers are imitating the prophets. That is the messenger, alayhi salam. So God says, indeed, your Lord knows that you get up less than two thirds of the night, half of it, and one third of it. And so do a faction of those with you. So the believers, لَكَدِكَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةُ أَسَنَةِ they are following the messenger as an example. So if God gave the salat, three salat to the messenger, who are you to do five? And you come and lie to us that he went to take uh, uh, Hamza salawat. Really? Yeah, in agony. JJ. J. Jika sharu wana chi. Jika sharveta. Do you see the point? So the night salat that you have to do, it consists of what? its own time that you can do the salat just as muhammad salam, was given three salat to do so somebody might ask then if he was only given the three salat how come uh, in the daytime he has to call people to come and do salat al jumaa the salat al jumaa there is nothing called salat al jumaa in the quran it doesn't exist wallahi lazim there is no salat in the quran called salat al jumaa an ignorant person might be listening to me and say, Oh, look at this guy. Is he saying chapter 62 verse 9? Is, go and read it again. I give you an assignment. Read it and come back and show me where he says Salat al Jumu'ah. There's nothing like that. The Salat the Prophet was supposed to establish at that time, it is part of the three Salats God gave him. Remember, one of the Salat is at Isha. It is at the what? Setting of the sun. At that time, it's a late afternoon Salat. So at that time, the darkness having, hasn't come yet. That is why God says, Ya you are lazina amanu. Is a new deal is salat. Min yawm al jumaat. Then he says, Fas aw ila zikirullahi wazarul bay. Because it is getting to the evening time. What do you lose when you, you end, you stop your, your seals and go and do your salat? Not, you, you lose nothing because the day is come, almost coming to an end. But it doesn't mean it is dark outside. Some people think when we say Isha according to the Quran, it means it is night. Everything is dark. Really? Or you refuse to study? Good. Salim, kakazo kaji nangan. Baura aji takalmiki gabai. Oh. Aha. So the evidences I gave you concerning the timings for the salat, we have three salats given to Muhammad alayhi salam. Hmm? We have three salats given to uh, Muhammad alayhi salam. Nothing else given to him. Wallahi, whichever scholar out there who says salat, uh, prophet was given five salat, or he says there is five salat in the Quran, please, please tell him there is a brother here, Shraib Abdullah. I need a live dialogue. Not debate, live dialogue, face to face. I will give him invite here. He comes here and prove it to us where God told the prophet, do five salat. Hey. Nacheji urumanka, kaka zuri. Kak 
kwa of computer number na Salim. Je, aiti wewe jeka sha, jeka sha mama to. Je, 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 je. Zaka bari nifushi kina. Je, 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 jeka sha mama. Eh. <clears throat> okay, so now I've shown you the evidences concerning the command God has given to Muhammad alayhi salam to establish the salat. Let me check my time. Salim. Je, ba, make nani? Oh. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, before I bring the topic to an end, let me take you some through some uh, few verses before I can arrange for the next topic next week inshallah. Now, this one has to do with chapter 18 verse 54. One interesting thing I want you to pay attention is especially uh, the Muslims who claim they are following the Quran alone. You need to be, be very careful of the way you you pursue knowledge in the Quran. Uh, sometimes uh, we have people hey you need to be careful the way you pursue some uh, knowledge from the Quran and stop using opinions assumption like I said in my last lecture last year concerning the Quran alone Muslims I was given the advice based on how some people approach the verses of God uh, it, it, it is totally out of context. You get the point. What God hasn't said, please don't say it. Huh? Don't say it. According to Quran chapter 7 verse 33, It is haram to do that. Huh? What you say about God, what you do not know, it is haram. But it's good to ask questions. You need to ask questions. It's good to reflect uh, on issues and then you know approach people but it doesn't mean you're drawing conclusions on opinions or assumption no it doesn't work like that you need to be factual you need to be able to prove what you say you understand because God will hold you accountable for it now chapter 18 verse 54 he says wa laqad sarrafna fi hadha he says and we have certainly conducted in this quran of every example for the people but the human being is disputing I can say or the human being disputes most things right the human being like to argue they will dispute most of the things you say even if they see you uh, this thing uh, Arwa Jr. I hope you are Hadisi <laughs> Yun ladies and gentlemen you can see one guy here Arwa Jr. I think he's Hadisi Yun these are the Hadith Yun, the slaves of Sahih Bukhari. <laughs> you know, the Hadith Yun, they are very funny. They, they refuse to know, to pay attention that they are the slaves of Sahih Bukhari. How embarrassing. Is it not better to be the slave of God instead of being a slave of another uh, human being who we are even yet to see if they existed? So check him very well. Too, too bad he doesn't have his profile picture. This Arua Jr., I think he's a slave of Sahih Bukhari. That is Hadith Yun. They belong in that sector. Hadith Yun. Cool. This Hadith Yun people. Let me catch you and your scholars one on one. No wonder you are scared of me for years. <laughs> I will humiliate you, Poto. Hadith Yun. If you are in your right senses, you leave the book of God to go and follow garbage somebody give you and tell you the book of Muhammad. Come and show me where Muhammad gave you the authority, where he assigned and said, this is Sahih, follow it. Come and prove to us where Muhammad ever chose it and said, this is Sahih, follow him. Come, slave of Sahih Bukhari, you come here, you call somebody Quran, you. Ammamu ta'adivasu jikujawu. Wawambanza. Aha. So, walakar sarrafuna fi haza la Quran li nas. Min kulli mathal. Wa kena li insana aksara shayi jadala. So you will give people every example from the Quran. And mind you. Here God didn't say dorabna. Walakad dorabna. No. He says walakad sarrafna. This is what the Arabians created a word called tasrif. Conjugation. God has done the Quran in such a way that. You don't need to stick to one verse or one chapter to get all your evidences from the verses of God. You need to what? Conjugate verses. 
uh, in order to, to come by your answers. Uh, God is my teacher. Arwa Junior, he says, you are very funny. Who is your teacher, please? God is my teacher. He says, wa kurrabbi zidni ilman. So he taught me, ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an. Now you tell us, who is your teacher, if not Sahih Bukhari? Huh? God has given you, come and hold on to Qur'an, millata Ibrahim, you are here fooling yourself, following garbages out there. Too bad you don't have your profile picture. You see how I will humiliate you, Porto. Foolish people. <clears throat> Yeah, hey, brother Alfred, how are you? Long time. <coughs> Arwa Junior, you are lucky I didn't see your face. Slave of Sahih Bukhari. You are fooling yourself, following sectarians, being paid to teach you jambos, garbages, and you claim you are following guidance. Let me catch you one-on-one -on -one and your scholars. Slave of Sahih Bukhari like you. Foolish people. Don't get up and study. And let me catch you and your scholars. No wonder you cannot show your face. Hadisi Yun. <laughs> Come and show your face, Hadisi Yun. Foolish person. Aha. Uh -huh. So now chapter 18 verse 54 clearly tells us, you give people evidences from the Quran. Every example is there, but they, they will still argue. Right? They, are, they like to argue. Like you see the slave of Sahih Bukhari, this Arwa Jr. Another slave who follows man-made stories. He's here to insult somebody who is following the guidance of God. Ha! Ah, are you kidding me? You slave of Sahih Bukhari. <laughs> you come here to mock a servant of God. <laughs> hey. hmm. uh, no, no, no problem. I was hoping because I was about to end the program, so I was just giving some little attention to this. <clears throat> Aha, uh -huh, let, let's go on. So chapter 18, verse 54, God says, وَلَكَرْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلِ So God has given us every example in the Quran. Every example. <laughs> I mean, liar. <Lyle. laughs> Which of the Bukhari? Is it president of Nigeria? Or <laughs> the dead one? The one, eh, okay, I mean, I mean, liar, you reminded me. Imagine somebody, an imam eh, from Albania, Imam Albani, who hasn't even met Imam Bukhari before. He is the one who has to choose for them which one is Sahih and which one is Do'i for them to follow. Hey! An imam from Albania, not even from Saudi Arabia. An imam from Albania, eh, who has to choose for them? Oh my God. Hmm. Now look, look, look at the donkey. He wrote, he said, Sheikh, please don't insult me. Where did you meet? Look, the English you are speaking, you don't even speak it well. He says, where did you meet God? Uh, when we say go and study, you are here fooling yourself. He says, where did you meet God and teach you, please? So I have to meet God for him to teach me. Please, when you were a baby, who taught you how to crawl? When you, Arwa Jr., when you were a baby, a toddler, who taught you how to crawl? I think the devil taught you. <laughs> Zukumbanza. <laughs> okay. So let's go on before I end the topic. So I take you to chapter 38, verse 29. So before that, we can see that God has given us every example in the Quran. Every example you are looking for. If it has to do about Salat, is there. If it's about Salat, you can find it in chapter 19, verse 58 to 59. How the Salat was done by the Prophet is there in the Quran. Right? So every example can be found in the Quran. Oh, so Arwa Junior, you want to learn from me. And you are here to insult me again. Oh, Sahih, slave of Sahih Bukhari, why will you do that? If you want to learn from your teacher, are you here to insult your teacher? Why do slaves do that? A uh, slave of Sohi Bukhari, uh, Hadisi Yun, you want to learn from me, I should teach you. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so we go to chapter 38, verse 29. Uh, pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just getting carried away a bit because I just thought of uh, how, you know, insane these people can be sometimes, you know. Uh, so pardon me if I'm getting carried away. Okay, so chapter 38, verse 29, it says, 
كتاب انزلناه اليك مبارك ليدبروا اياته وليتذكر اولي الالباب it is a blessed book which we have revealed to you muhammad alayhi salam ha huh? muhammad alayhi salam then god says so that they they the people they may contemplate its verses and that those of intelligence will take heed not fools not fools not fools not slaves of sahih bukhari no those of intelligence will take heed of the verses of god because a slave of sahih bukhari will tell you no 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 i need the the book of muwatta ibn kathir or ibn majah to understand the quran this is this is what they do huh? Huh? you see so now god says it is a blessed book which we have revealed to you muhammad alayhi salam so that they may contemplate it verses and that those of intelligence will take it so now we need to contemplate the verses of god in order for the those of intelligence to take it so you don't expect the verses of the god to be that simple that every dick tom and harry will just take the verses and understand even your academics you don't expect everybody to pass the exams the ones who are intelligent and steady they are the ones who can what pass the exams so even muhammad alayhi salam since we are following him as an example because he is the perfect uh, example we can follow as a messenger right <clears throat> yes so since he is the example we are supposed to follow let's go and see what god told him to do right so chapter 6 verse 105 i'm always bringing my topic to an end because i have to go for my salat so chapter 6 verse 105 here it says wa kazalika nusarrifu al-ayat wa liyaqulu darasta wa lunubayyinahu liqaumi ya'lamun thus have we conducted the sarf god has done the tasrif with the verses he has in the quran that they they the people the same people who are supposed to contemplate the verses they the people may say you you the rasta darasta, you have studied because god has done the tasrif in the quran in such a way that you need to actually study it in order to to get the answers you want you get the point so that's how we conducted the verses that they may say salam uh, brother uh, munib ali that they may say you have studied then it goes thank you say slave of sahih bukhari hadith yun thank you my interpretation are wrong thank you i appreciate your time huh? good you can just keep writing like that without insult i appreciate because if you insult i'll block you because i'm here to uh, like lecture wise people <laughs> uh -huh. Ever since God guided me, no no wise person has ever insulted me. Yes. So if you want to be categorized among the wise people, you just listen to my lectures. If you don't like it, you can bounce off. No git fee. So just bounce. Okay? Because if you insult, I'll block you. Uh -huh. Because I'm being playful with you a bit. Even though I don't see your face, but I know you are somebody I might know. So if you want to be allowed to see whatever I've been doing, I know maybe you want to enjoy my seeing my handsome face. So don't insult anybody. Just keep on doing your jokes. I will allow you. But if you cross the limit, I'll block you. Thus have we conducted the verses that they may say, they the people may say, you, walakulu the rasta, you have studied, so that they, we may clarify it. What? Walunubayinahu. What is that? The Quran, the book. That's why God told the prophet, "La tuharrik bihi lisanaka litajla bihi. Inna alayna jama'ahu wa qur'anahu, fa iza qara'nahu fattabi qur'ana, thumma inna alayna bayanahu." So the bayan of the Quran belongs to God. God has to do the bayan of the Quran, not Muhammad alayhi salam, not even me Shu'aib Abdullah. I'm not doing any bayan. What I'm doing is I'm revealing it to the people. Because God has already clarified it to me. So when I take it, I reveal the same clarification God has done to me. This is the, 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 the secret. You see how it goes. So God says, so that they may say, you have said it, so that we may clarify it to people who know. Do you see here? 
So somebody who knows the Quran, uh, if you have studied and you are dealing with him, he knows you know what you are saying. And he knows God has clarified the verses of God. That's how it works. You see. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So let's, to bring the topic to an end, I just take you to some couple of verses. What God asks us to do. Chapter 7 verse 3. This is the simple thing God asks you to do concerning his book. He only said what? He said, then he says, Follow what has been revealed to you from your Lord, and do not follow allies besides God. That is him. Really do you take heed? Really. Do not follow allies, but as Sahih Bukhari's slave or follower, Hadithiyun will tell you that without Sahih Bukhari, you are lost. <laughs> they will tell you without Ibn Kathir, you are lost. They will tell you without Sahih Muslim, Ibn Majah, you are lost. They will tell you without Jami at Thirmidhi, you are lost. Are you, are you okay? Look at what God is telling you. Ittabi'u ma unzila ilaykum min rabbikum. Wala tattabi'u min dunihi awliya. Kalilan ma tazakkaroon. Really, really do you take heed? Do you even pay attention to God? Really? You see? Apart from that, he said in chapter 6, verse 155, clearly, listen what God says, clearly, he says, he says, وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكٌ فَاتَّبِئُوهُ Then he says, وَاتَّقُوا لَأَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And this is a blessed book which we have revealed. So follow it. But this is difficult for Sahih Bukhari followers. This, the Hadithiyun. This is difficult. So follow it and become pious. He didn't say follow them. Follow it. فَاتَّبِئُوهُ then he says what? La Allah kum turhamun, so that you may attain mercy. It means the rahma. You don't want it. That the mercy God wants you to get. You don't want it. This is why you go to Sahih Bukhari. Do you see? Then it goes again. The last but the least, I take you to chapter thirty-nine, verse fifty-five to fifty-six. The last but the least, chapter thirty-nine, verse fifty-five to verse fifty-six. Yes, actually, uh, Yasin Malakatan, they need to repent. Without repentance, there is no access for, for that. Huh? So God says in chapter 39, verse 55, Then he says, Then he says, An, nafsun, ya. Hasrata, hasrata ala ma farratu, farratu fi janbillahi. Then he says, wa in kuntu laminal sahirin. Now God is saying here, and follow the best. The word used there is ahsana. Ahsana, that is best. It's not hasan. He says ahsana, that is best. It's in a superlative form. In Arabic they say saifat tafsil. So God says, and follow the best of what has been revealed to you. That is, ilaykum, jamu'un. Then he says, mirabbikum, from your Lord. Then he says what? Before the punishments come to you, surprisingly, while you do not perceive. Now, following the best is as simple as it is. When you take the Quran, you are supposed to believe in the entire book. According to chapter 2, verse 85, you cannot believe in part of the Quran and leave part of the Quran. It has to be the whole book. But when it comes to following the book, you cannot follow everything in the Quran. It's impossible. Do you know why? Because God says, You can find the khutuwat shaitan in the Quran. You can find the khutuwat of Fir'auna in the Quran. Are you going to follow that? Are you going to act like shaitan? Or are you going to act like uh, uh, this thing, uh, Fir'auna? No. But you can find it in the Quran. So you are not following that. The best examples God has given you 
is in the Quran. You can find from the footsteps of uh, Ibrahim, alayhi salam. From the footsteps of what? Muhammad, alayhi salam. From the footsteps of the honorable prophet and messengers. If you are a woman, from the footsteps of Maryam. From the footsteps of the wives of the prophet. The examples are in the Quran. So following the best of what your Lord has revealed to you can be found in the Quran. But it doesn't mean you should follow all of the Quran. You can't. You have to follow the best inside the Quran. Do you see how it works? Right. So chapter 39 verse 56 says, Lest a soul should say, Oh, my heart break over what I neglected in the aspect of God. And that I was among the mockers. Like the guy who just came. Uh, the Arwa Junior. The, the slave of Sahih Bukhari. He just came to mock me. He doesn't know I'm well prepared. <laughs> the best they can do is mock, insult. I can live with it. Right? I can live with it. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, my salat time is up. This is where I drop the topic for today. Uh, I just came to uh, elaborate on the issue of people calling people Quraniyun or Quranist. You have to refute that. Don't agree to anybody who calls you a Quraniyun. But to make it simple, when somebody calls you a Quraniyun, don't get angry. Just call him Adisiyun. And you see how he will react. He will be more infuriated than you are. Yes, when they call you Quran you just smile off, brush it off, just call them Hadith you and see how they react. Now, the essence of the Quran we have is you have to study the Quran very well. It's just like when you are going for your exams or academics, you study in order to get more knowledge from it, right? You need to study, and when we say study, is to consider in detail and subject. Huh? Consider in detail and subject to an analysis in order to discover essential features or meaning. That's why we study. Now, when God is talking about illa ulil albab, he's talking about those who possess intelligence. You need intelligence in your daily life. The ability to comprehend, to understand and profit from experience. This is intelligence. You need that too. That's why God always says this is for those who possess intelligence. That's why God is telling us to study. You need to study. Now, you need to follow. When we say follow, it doesn't mean you are following like a sheep or you be a tabi'in like the Sahih Bukhari followers are doing. When we say follow, we are talking about act in accordance with God's rules, commands, and his wishes. That is tabi'u, follow, taba'a. To follow here, God is telling you to act in accordance with his rules, his commands, and his wishes. This is the follow here. So this is why chapter 17 verse 36 is telling you, Chapter 17 verse 36 is saying, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. Don't do that. You can be studying the Quran for so many months or years. Please, don't rush into conclusions if you have not finished studying. Do you see the point? Uh -huh. You have to finish studying something, grasp the knowledge thereof before you take step to it. So that when you start acting on it, you don't look like a stupid person. When somebody asks you, why do you do this? How do you do this? You can explain. You don't just say, oh, according to Shu'ayn, or according to the, this uh, Hanafi or Shafi or Maliki. No, you look like a sheep. <laughs> do, you, do you get my point, ladies and gentlemen? So let's be careful. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Yasim al -Katan, that's right. Yes. Uh -huh. So you see, this is what we do as uh, uh, believers, Muslims who follow the Quran alone. This is what you need to follow. You are following the footsteps of Muhammad, alayhi salam. Uh, you see, you see, you see how foolish some people can be. He says Quran is not common sense, please. So it means Quran is is for fools. Is that what you mean? <laughs> I told you the Sahih Bukhari followers they have no common sense. Azbunallah wa nimal wakin. Subhana Rabbi izzati amma isifud wa salamu ala al-musalim wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time and patience. I need to end the topic here. Tell this guy to go and read chapter 12, verse 2, uh, where God says, uh, 
God has made the Quran in Arabic language in order to what? Takilun. He should go and check it. He doesn't have common sense. <laughs> oh, and his followers. And his youth. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I leave you now. I have to go for my salat. I appreciate your time and effort. And uh, inshallah, next week, I have some questions here to answer. So I will come on the topic to answer those questions, inshallah. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and effort. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all.